Oh, hello there. I can barely see you with all the microphones. What's going on over here? What are we doing? So welcome back to the channel. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be doing a mic test trial with you, uh, for you, with three different kinds of microphones. They're not going to be here the whole time, don't worry. So what we have here is a shotgun mic, a Sennheiser shotgun, and then we've got a dynamic mic right here. This is more of an instrument mic, like a drum mic. Also works for vocals, but mainly for close miking instruments. And then over here, we've got a large diaphragm condenser mic, a Rode K2. So I'm going to be giving you sound samples with each of these mics. Let's clear this out of the way. Uh, we'll come back to that one later. Welcome back. Uh, so I'm going to be playing four different flutes for you in this example. I've got flutes from an high, a high E to a low D and a couple in between, an A and an F sharp. We're going to listen to them on each microphone without any effects except for maybe a little reverb because we got to have reverb. Come on. Uh, and then uh, we're going to just listen to the sound of the mics, but we're also going to, I'm going to talk a little bit about how to play with the mic, how to orient yourself to these different microphones, because each one has different qualities. Each one has pros and cons. And you might find yourself, you might find yourself in a, in a situation where you're using one of these types of mics. And so knowing what those qualities are, how to best orient yourself to the mic, how to make it sound the most musical, the most consistent, uh, will be helpful for you. All right, so that's the goal in this video. Let's get right into it. So I am going to set up the, the, con the dynamic mic, and dynamic mics are mics that are not powered. They don't have their own power source, um, so we need to get a little bit closer to them, put a little more energy into them so that we can have a good signal. Um, these other mics are condenser mics, and basically all that means for you is that they, they do use what's called phantom power. They use power to help with the sensitivity to bring you more uh, volume for the amount of you know, pressure that we're putting into them. They tend to be a little more sensitive, capture a little more dynamic range, uh, give a, you know, a more true sound overall, and the power travels through the mic cord and it's called phantom power. You can look that up. All right, so we're, we're all powered up over here. Right now you're hearing my talking mic, my shotgun mic. So let's start with the shotgun. We'll move over to the large diaphragm condenser and we'll go to the dynamic mic. And let's start with a mid A flute, this guy. And I'm gonna play one at a time. I'll tell you the mic I'm using in case you, didn't, you don't wanna watch the screen. Uh, and uh, we'll go down the row. All right, so all I'm doing here is adding a little reverb. I'll go from mic to mic. Shotgun mic. Large diaphragm condenser mic. Dynamic mic. Okay, so that was a quick run through of the three mics. Maybe you heard a little bit of difference. Now you're gonna hear more detail if you're using earbuds, headphones, or high quality speakers than you will if you're just listening on your iPad, iPhone, whatever, or, or Android. <laughs> uh, if you're just listening on your little tiny phone speakers, not, you're not gonna hear a whole lot of difference probably. But there are differences. Now, before we go to the next flute, which will be our F sharp, um, I want to point out some and show you 
how these mics respond to my proximity and my lateral movement, or, you know, it could be vertical, but let's say movement away from where the mic is aimed. The shotgun mic is going to be the most focused in terms of the area that it captures. So the, the whole point of a shotgun is that you, it can be away from you, and it's very focused. It's usually used for dialogue, capturing voice uh, in TV, film, and so therefore it just its purpose is to capture one source, you know, a source, and block out everything else. So I'm going to move across. We're not going to use any reverb right now. I'm going to move across this plane so you can see what the effect is on the mic. So I think what we heard there is that when I move away, there's a big difference, right, in the sound. When I moved to and fro, towards and away from the mic, there's a difference, but not a huge difference, right? Because it's really focused in this whole channel. So you can think of the capture area, the playing area that you want to be for the shotgun, in, at, like, in the path of fire, so to speak. <laughs> uh, and it's it's important that the shotgun is aimed at you, and when you're performing, if you're performing with a shotgun, just know that if you turn away from it, and this goes for all these mics, but especially the shotgun, if well, and the dynamic, if you turn away from it, it's not super forgiving. So you might experience, or the audience might experience, a volume drop if you turn away from the shotgun mic. All right, let's go to the large diaphragm condenser. I'm going to do the same test. So similar behavior, however, I feel like this one, as long as you're within a certain kind of arc near the microphone, uh, there isn't as big of a difference when you get off the mic a little. Um, there's also, I'd say, a bigger difference with proximity. The closer, If you get closer to the condenser mic, the large diaphragm condenser mic, uh, I think the sound is going to be very different than if you're farther away. You can be farther away and you can be closer, but the quality of the sound is going to be a bit different. So it's more sensitive distance-wise from the mic than I would say the shotgun is. Uh, let's go to the dynamic mic and you're going to hear probably the biggest difference in both distance and, and orientation to the microphone than from the other uh, two condenser mics. <laughs> So with that, I know these, these are quick um, samples, but with that, I think what we heard was that if you're not close to the mic, it's a very different kind of sound. Um, however, when you do get close to the mic, it's a pretty good sound. It's, you know, it's not that bad. You can get a good quality recording uh, with a dynamic mic. You just need to be a bit closer to it. I'm going to go on and play... Uh, a couple other flutes. Let's go with the high flute and then we're going to go with the low flute. This is a high E flute and uh, I'll add the reverb back in just so you can hear what each mic sounds like with the higher flute. Shotgun mic.
charged diaphragm condenser. Dynamic mic. Let's go to our bass mic now, a D. Uh, with the with the high uh, flute, I could be farther away from the microphones. Uh, it's a little more forgiving because it's a louder flute. It cuts through more. And um, you can be your own judge about the sound quality. I think if you go back and listen to that, you'll, you'll experience the shotgun mic as a little harsh uh, as compared to the other two mics. But let's let's go ahead and do the play the D, the bass D. And we'll start with shotgun and then the large diaphragm condenser and then the dynamic mic. All right, so um, just to wrap up, a couple of my thoughts and opinions. Uh, one is with regard to the sound quality of the mics, to me, the most musical and full is the large diaphragm condenser. It's made for that. It's, this is more of a what we call a studio microphone. It's great for recording. If you're in, I would say, a controlled environment like I am here, if you're outside, if you're in a big space, uh, it could be problematic. These are the large diaphragm condensers are more prone to feedback. They're more they're more prone to catching all of the sound that's in an area. So you could end up with other people, other sounds coming into the mic, getting amplified, getting recorded. I think what we heard with this large diaphragm condenser is that it picks up a lot more detail down to the breath and all the highs of the fingers and the breath and every you know holding the flute moving around it could pick up your clothing shuffling your feet in a studio it's very sensitive so you need to keep that in mind whenever you're choosing a large diaphragm condenser backing up the shotgun brighter it works fine for um, high pitched instruments uh, when we get down to the lower range lower pitched uh, lower frequencies it's not as musical. It's not really meant for lower stuff. It's meant for vocals in a vocal range, so typical human vocal range. Um, works okay with most Native American style flutes because most flutes are in that kind of vocal range. However, I feel like it's a little, uh, it's just not as musical. It's a little harsh. Um, it's not typically a mic that's used for recording instruments. However, uh, it's okay in a live setting uh outdoors it might be more forgiving because you could put a wind sock on it you could put a wind protector um which would help with uh, you know extraneous sounds it might be good if you want to not have a mic right in front of your face you can be a little farther away from the shotgun so if you're making a video or something you don't want to have a mic right there 
uh, then a uh, shotgun might be a good choice. Also for me, I use the shotgun a lot in my studio for doing my videos because I can have it out. Usually it's just above my head or out of the shot or just in the shot a tiny bit, but it's not in my way. And I like it for that reason. I don't have to wear, you know, a headphone or have microphones in the shot. So it just kind of captures everything. Is it the most musical? Not really. But there's a trade-off there. For the dynamic mic, I think what we heard there is it is it actually can be a really nice, warm, musical sound compared to the large diaphragm condenser. It's not going to capture all of the nuances and subtlety, like just the breath sound and the air traveling across the flute. It's not capturing as much of that, but that might be okay. It just depends how you're going to use the recording. One of the big pluses of a dynamic mic in a live setting is uh, that it's not as sensitive and therefore you can set up some dynamic mics, say outdoors or in a hall, in a performance space, and they're not amplifying everything. And so the performer can get right up close to the mic and still have a nice sound, um, but they're not as prone to feedback and amplifying a lot of, you know, extraneous uh, or elemental environmental sounds. Um, they also don't require phantom power. They tend to be more durable and not as sensitive. These other mics are a bit more fragile. Um, the dynamic mics, you know, they use them on the road a lot. They can basically, not, I'm not recommending this, but <laughs> they can hit the floor and be okay. Um, but you do need to play close to them. So if you're concerned, again, kind of the opposite I, I talked about with the shotgun mic, if you don't want to have a mic or you don't mind having a mic right close to you, kind of in your face, maybe blocking, you know, the audience from seeing you, then the dynamic's okay. Um, so there's trade-offs with all of these. Cost-wise, the dynamic mics are going to be the lowest uh, cost then maybe into the shotguns and or the condenser, large diaphragm condenser, just depends on the brand and the model. But um, I would say shotgun is in the middle usually, and then the high end, you can get into the vocal mics, the large diaphragm condenser mics. However, today, there are a lot of mics at a lot of different price points available. So um, I wouldn't say that any one is necessarily more economical, but that would be the trend, would be dynamic, shotgun, and then large diaphragm condenser. All right, ultimately, if you're doing projects, you're doing recordings, you're gonna to wanna to have more than one mic. But if you're starting off and you just wanna get one, then I would recommend considering how you're gonna use the mic and consider everything I just said. I'm not gonna repeat it all, but are you gonna be inside, outside? Are you doing studio recordings? Are you doing live gigs? Um, you know, what's the environment gonna be like? Uh, and then make your decision based on that. And do you have phantom power? You need phantom power. A lot of mixers and some amps and things have phantom power, so it's not as it's not a big issue. But you just want to be aware uh, that you you know make sure you you can have phantom power for your condenser mics, uh, whereas you don't need phantom power for your dynamic mics. All right, there is more stuff on mics. If you want to find out more about specific mics and all that stuff I talked about. Uh, there's other videos that address that. But I hope this video has helped you as a musician. You don't have to be a flute player per se, but I, helped it's, I hope it, that it's helped you uh, understand the qualities of each type of mic, both musically and physically, um, and then considerations for application uh, of how you would use the mic and why you would choose one over the other and all of that stuff. All right, if you like this content, please give the video a like. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell for notifications and join us at patreon.com slash Kalani to connect with me more. If you've got questions for me, see me over there. If you've got any other kind and helpful comments and information for our people in general, put it in the comments section and look in the description for more resources and uh, to connect with me more. Thanks for watching, you guys. I'm Kalani. We'll see you in another video.